The next thing I see is my expensive furniture in the yard. Today on Folks, a visit with professional storytellers at the Contemporary Art Center in New Orleans and some very special Christmas music to put you in the holiday spirit on today's edition of Folks. everyone, I'm Sonia Massengale and welcome to a Christmas edition of Folks. The Christmas season is when we revive family traditions and one tradition that most of us have in common is storytelling. Everyone loves a story, but not everyone can tell one as eloquently as the professional storytellers that we're about to meet. Recently, Junebug Productions hosted a storytelling festival and conference at the Contemporary Arts Center in New Orleans. The purpose of the festival and conference was to study and celebrate the ancient art of storytelling, something we can all relate to. I look nice, I look nice, I look nice. <laughs> you rather said, yeah, you look nice now, help me put mine on. As one of few male early childhood educators, Lynn Cabral found himself with mostly overactive children in his class. He discovered his storytelling career accidentally while reading stories to calm the children before lunch. I decided that this was this very well may be their first experience having somebody read to them, and if so, their first experience isn't a pleasant one. If I keep saying "sit still," "stop that," "come back," and so I put the book away and said, "I'm going to tell you a story," and I said, "Well, where are the pictures? The imagination." And so I started telling a story, and I started doing creative dramatics, and I tell a story, and if I had this child in class who was very active. His name was Gilbert. I'd say, once he was a rabbit, had a long, bushy tail, big, floppy ears. His name was Gilbert. Now little Gilbert goes, hey, everybody, quiet down. It's about Gilbert the rabbit. Yeah. And Gilbert the rabbit hopped across the field to visit his friend, Sammy the frog. Hey, Sammy, me and you, okay, good. And so I got these kids that could not sit still for three or four minutes to sit still and listen to a story for 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 15 minutes. And then I realized the value of storytelling because if I could hold their attention that long, I can teach them lots of things. Although his Cape Verdean grandparents taught him many of the stories that he tells now, Cabral's research is extensive. He collects stories from all over the world. What I like doing is following the trickster characters throughout the cultures. You know, the Anansi of the West Indies, the Native Americans, Coyote, Najradeen of Persia in the Far East, um, you know, Br'er Rabbit, these type of stories, Jack, uh, uh, John, uh, these stories here, because every culture has a trickster, and, uh, and I like to, you know, show that in storytelling, that you can go from country to country and there's a trickster tale, and basically all folk tales are telling stories to the children so the children will grow up to be good people. Don't be greedy, Anansi was greedy, don't think you're so clever. Coyote was real clever one time, and this is what happened to him. And so these are the types of stories that I personally uh, like to find and tell. And then lit out after that rabbit. Now the rabbit ran, and his long tail flopped, and the dog was getting it. Rabbit How ran. the rabbit came to have a short tail is one of the famous Anansi stories that has African roots. But Cabral often rewrites the stories he tells to suit modern audiences. When I'm doing a workshop with students, on telling stories, if they have a hard time st writing a story from scratch, I, I retell a story that they all know, but I tell it differently, and they go, oh. So it opens up another door, say, oh, it doesn't have to be told the way that we heard it before. We can tell it differently. And I tell the kids that stories are not written in cement. Some stories written in, uh, in the early 20s or, or the early uh, 1900s, uh, you may look at it now and say, oh, that story's uh, sexist, so that story's racist, you know? And at that time, it, maybe it wasn't thought to be that way. But now, since we're more aware of feelings in different uh, cultures, we realize, well, that story is, is sort of negative in, in this respect. So we can change that. It's a beautiful story, so let's, but let's drop that, uh, that piece out that's, that's offending to somebody. 
and um, mend the story and make it a, a healthy story. And dogs are always chasing them. Yes, they are. <laughs> my daddy is the best dad. You don't tell me that my daddy is the best, 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 best. My daddy is strong, 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 strong. Yes, my daddy just lived weak. My daddy is strong. When my daddy was a boy, he had a bicycle. Was the fastest bike in the whole world. Paul Keynes Douglas is known in Trinidad as the Caribbean Bill Cosby. He discovered his talent for writing and telling stories in graduate school in Jamaica. Well, most of my stories, I write them myself. I have um, three books, I have what, five albums, you know, a, a, a lot of um, material. Um, but they are more creative writing based on experiences in the Caribbean. Um, like weddings and wakes and christenings and beauty contests and going to the beach. Um, I use these situations and um, creative imagination to build on them. Many of Douglas's stories for children are educational, based on folk characters whose experiences teach about life. They don't have one teeth in his mouth. Always walking around smiling and frightening people. <laughs> I write a lot of stuff that includes the folk figures of the Caribbean because these things are dying out like in most countries um, with re in, uh, radio and television nobody is telling stories anymore and a lot of the material we have folk material is dying and the only real way to make it live is to bring it back in the form where people can hear it and take note and therefore what I do I take a lot of folk material and write creative stories using them as characters. In the Caribbean we have a whole wealth of um, you know, um, folk figures like Laja Bless, which is a devil woman, the Dwen, which is a child who died without getting baptized, the Mama Maladi, which is a woman who died um, in childbirth and is always looking for the child. Then of course you have the Sukuyan, the old woman who can take off her skin and fly at night like a ball of fire across the sky and come and suck the blood from your neck like Dracula. You know, and we have plenty. The Phantom, the man about 40 foot tall who stands across the road and as you pass between his legs, just bam, and he marches you fine, fine. We have some wonderful folk characters in the Caribbean. But his personal favorite is a story poem that he wrote about a real bit of Trinidadian history. It traces the origins of the steel band and appeals to young and old alike. I was day when they bury Sugar George, when he get the first piece of property he ever owned, six foot of hard, dry Trinidad soil, and was dust to dust and George to dust in true Trinidadian style. The pans was playing when George dead that night, beating the dark with notes so sweet that the dead man dead twice, they say. He closed the eye, he breathed the last. People say, oh God, George gone. But then the pan hit a high. He opened the eye, say, pan father. Then dead to hell and gone away. A fitting end for Sugar George. For he was a man, a real man. And more than that, a steel band man. A long time ago, an old man lived all alone in the deep dark forest. That old man's cabin didn't have but one room. Louise Anderson is a well-known storyteller from North Carolina. She claims to have been telling stories in one fashion or another most of her life. There's a tradition in my family. We, we tell each other stories. And, and there was a, a man that across the street from us who used to tell stories. And I love them. And I learned them. And I have either been blessed or cursed. Like all good storytellers, Anderson uses her stories to entertain as well as inform. This story teaches the virtues of a formal education. And then the mother tried to blow out the light. <laughs> her mouth was twisted. So when you blew you up, and then the light didn't go out. <laughs> then the mother asked one of her sons, his name was Sam. He said, Sam. He said, yes, Mom. <laughs> she said, will you blow out the light? Well, yes, a real hay replied. Well, I wish you wouldn't be there. Well, I will say it, hey. Then Sam tried to blow out the light, but what was wrong with it? His mouth was dressing. So where did blow his head? Said, I didn't kill her. <laughs> 
That everyone loves a story, fact or fiction, is perhaps one of the universal truths that make us a part of the human family. Nowhere is that truth more apparent than in Anderson's true story of collecting folk tales in the mountains of North Carolina. I went to a restaurant and this little boy was there and he was fascinated. Oh, I had on all these bright colors and evidently I was the first black person he'd ever seen. Or if he had, he hadn't noticed it, but he couldn't help but notice me. And he came to me and he felt my hand, you know, and his mother was a little embarrassed. I knew what he was doing. It was all right with me. And so finally he came over, he, he just couldn't stand it. He came over and, and he touched me, he said, what color is your car? <laughs> and I told him that my car was red and purple and green and, and that it had stripes and, uh, and flowers and I told him there were tiger skins. And, oh, I described a perfect car and he said, oh, that sounds pretty. And I was delighted because here was a child I don't care how old he became. In the rest of his life, he would remember his first black person as pretty, you see. And so from that day henceforth, I never worry. All I try to do is be pretty. <laughs> a few years ago, we captured a very special moment at the governor's mansion in Baton Rouge, acclaimed pianist Moses Hogan in Christmas concert. Today, from that performance, we'll hear Scott Joplin's Gladiolus Rag and Mr. Hogan's own rendition of Joy to the World.
Not too many years ago, folks visited Dr. Valerian Smith, a Baton Rouge composer at home. He gathered a few of his friends together to sing some of his original Christmas music. Another song I've written is, I Never Heard Those Christmas Bells, because a lot of people don't have all the things that everybody has for Christmas. I want you to hear, I Never Heard Those Christmas Bells, Earl Taylor, all right? Okay. I never had those Christmas bells I never heard them ring Christmas always was for me Christmas always was for me a hurting thing. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Thank you, Earl. Yeah, okay. Nice. It's all right. <laughs> The next song is I Am a Child, because we're all children born in this world. And the one thing we need and want is, well, hear the song, I Am a Child. We'll start with Samara, then Shauna will join her, and then, all right, good. Ah. 
ask, spread love for one and all. I am a child, but wait a while, this world will soon be Earth could be paradise if each of us would give a gift of love, not only for Christmas Day, but every day. And we want you to join us in giving this gift of love to each other and everyone you see during the course of the day, no matter when, where. Every year there comes one day when we all give gifts and play. Every household has a feast. All wars stop. And on Earth, there's peace. Christmas comes but once a year. Christmas comes but Christmas comes but once a year, and we hope that yours will be special this and every year. From folks and all of us here at LPB, we wish you a happy and safe holiday season. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.